Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Nick Acosta with Let's Grow in Christ. Today, we're going to talk about Francis Chan's book, Crazy Love. This is a book that you must read, and we're going to talk about what's in this book, what I saw in this book, what I've read in this book, and what kind of things it teaches us believers today. So stay tuned. Let's talk about it. Let's grow. So I have my tea right here. Usually when I'm drinking tea or drinking coffee, I like to uh, read the word of God. I like to drink some hot tea, drink some hot coffee, read the word of God, get the scriptures in my mind, uh, meditate on the word of God, renew my mind with what's uh, God's will, God's instructions, God's commandments. Um, or I like to read a Christian book um, that's not just going to entertain me or give me somebody's story, testimony, and how they used to sin and how they came to Christ and all those things. I like to read a book that's going to uh, remind me of what God's word says and um, and emphasize things that the word of God emphasizes in, um, that are important to Christians today. So this is one of those books, Crazy Love. Let's talk about it. So I've never really listened to Francis Chan um, that frequently. Uh, I heard his name. In fact, I remember in Bible college, I had a roommate back in 2013. I had a roommate who had this book, Crazy Love. And I remember seeing it um, at the dining room table. And I looked at it, walked past it. And, and that's it. I never read it. I remember seeing Francis Chan's face. I never listened to him. Uh, but this, this last year, um, I've listened to uh, a couple, sir, a few sermons here and there from Francis Chan, and uh, I decided, wow, he, he, I agree with him. He's 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 saying stuff that I've been seeing in the Bible, and that the Lord's been revealing to me, showing me, and reminding me um, about His Word. Maybe things that I overlooked or I forgot about or stopped emphasizing as much. Um, and and so I decided to. Um, use one of Francis Chan's books for one of our ministries book club. Uh, it was a marriage book, uh, You and Me Forever. Um, there's a there, there, there's a video I did on that book here. You can click the link and watch the video, um, the review that I did on that marriage book from Francis Chan. Well, after that marriage book, I remembered that I've always wanted to check out Crazy Love. So I went ahead and got it and started reading it. And uh, I'm going to talk about that today. Uh, so Crazy Love is basically a book um, that has so much scripture um, that reminds us of who God is, what God's character is like, and how God is love and how much he loves us and the uh, the depths uh, that he went to um, to save us, right? To, to make us his own special people through Jesus Christ. Praise God. And uh, I want to talk about a few things that this book teaches. I think it's very, very important for us to get these things. One of the lines that I like from this book is this. The only sane response to his love is a wholehearted devotion to Jesus. The only sane response from us believers to the love of God through Jesus' death for our salvation, for our benefit, not his, is our devotion to God, our commitment to God, us following Jesus. That's why he said, this is the love of God, his, to keep his commandments. If we love him, we will keep his word. Jesus said, let go of your life, deny yourself, follow me. You know, if we really believe God loves us, if we really believe the only way to the forgiveness of sins, to the born again experience, to the gift of the Holy Spirit, to salvation and one day eternal life enters into his kingdom. If we really believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to these things and that Jesus dying was God's proven demonstration of his love for us to want to save us and not just send us to hell, then we will feel a love for God, a thanksgiving, a gratitude, and a feeling of, of, of owing God our everything. The Bible says that our bodies is, a, is the temple of the Holy Spirit, that our spirit is God's, that our body is God's, that we should glorify God with our spirit and our body, that we belong to him now. We've been bought at a price, purchased, no longer our own, that it, we've died with Christ. It's no longer us, us who lives, but Christ who lives in us. The Bible says to offer our bodies as living sacrifices to God. So if we really believe this, we will 
Show it and display it through a devotion, a commitment that shows that we love God with our whole hearts and we're going to live for him and not for ourselves and not for sin and not for this world. This is vital. This is Christian 101, guys. That's why I love this book. And that line I just read, I think it's foundational. To follow up with that, here's another line. It says, the crazy people in this world are those who experience God's love and remain complacent, not those who let go of all they have and follow him completely. <laughs> so the crazy people are those who experience his love, see the goodness of God, see the mercy and patience and compassion of God, see how he died for us, how he loves us so much, how he's given us chance after chance and still given us a chance by not returning yet to judge the world and create a new heaven, a new earth and destroy the world, right? The only sane people are those who actually leave everything, let go of everything and follow him completely. That's so right. We got to ask ourselves, are we really following Jesus? Did we really let go of our old lives, of our upbringing, of our old habits, our old hobbies, our old careers, our old passions and desires, our own old purpose? Did we really let go of our love for money, our love for sex, for women, for men? Did we really let go of everything that's holding us back from living for him? Some people are being held back by football, by basketball, by their career by their boyfriend, their girlfriend. Jesus said it's better to cut off your hand or, or gouge out your eye and enter the kingdom of God than to enter hell with both of your eyes or both your hands. Whatever is keeping us from truly following Jesus, truly obeying Jesus Christ as Lord, because he's not only Savior, he is Lord, he is King, he is Master. Whatever's keeping us from truly following him, we need to let go of those things, okay? Because it's better that we receive entrance to his kingdom one day by truly following him, living for him, okay? He's going to judge us according to our lives, not just our confession. It's important that we show that we love God too, not just that we receive or believe in his love only. That's one way. That's not relationship. He said one day he's going to tell many, depart from me, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of sin, you worker of iniquity, of unrighteousness. We got to follow Jesus, guys. We got to follow Jesus and keep his word. Here's something that Francis Chan uh, quoted um, in, the, in the preface only. To just read the Bible, attend church, and avoid big sins. Is this passionate, wholehearted love for God? You know, so it was insinuating. This isn't all that our Christian life is supposed to be. This is not what it's supposed to look like. Just, you know, read the Bible, attend church and avoid the big sins. You know, we've all been or, or maybe seen the Christians who say, yeah, I go to church. Yeah, I, I, I read I read my Bible. I read a couple of scriptures in the morning. Yeah, I don't murder nobody. I don't cheat on my wife. I don't I don't, you know, uh, worship any other gods. But the one God, you know, we avoid the big sins. I don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you know, but that's not the Christian life that Jesus explained we would have and described. He described the life, he described the life of good fruit, of good works, a life full of the, the, the holiness and the love of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit, a life of, of light, a life of influencing people and, per, and persuading to people to follow Jesus if they want to become right with God and not burn in hell forever. You know, are we passionate about our eternity our soul our christianity our relationship with god but are we are we also passionate about other people and loving other people you know all the parables jesus used were parables that pointed to the urgency the urgency that we need to have the urgency that we need to have about his coming about him coming back and judging us according to our lives to see what we did with our salvation with what he left us and also the Good Samaritan, right? Also, the parables were also leading us to, to understand how he expects us to treat people right with justice, with mercy, with love, with selflessness, consideration. So we got to think about those things. I, uh, I, I definitely recommend this book. I recommend you read Crazy Love by Francis Chan. If you, um, 
If you maybe you feel like you're not living out your Christian life, you're not obeying the word of God. If you don't feel the passion for God that you believe you should be feeling, if you're not doing the things you believe you should be doing as a Christian, as a believer, as a follower of Jesus, if, if you're not even sure if you're following Jesus correctly, I definitely advise that you read this book. I mean, we spent $10, $15 on meals. Some people maybe more, 20, 25, 30 on meals. You this is this book is a hundred, let's see, 200, about 220 pages is the revised and updated version. Two about 200 and um and 20 pages. Come on, for only what 10, 15 bucks. We need to invest in our growth as believers. We need to invest in growing in Christ and being transformed, renewing our minds and, and, and learning what God expects of us and learning um, how God wants us to live. Amen. Because he is worthy of our love back to him. Yes, he loved us first. Yes, he died for us. Yes, he proved his love for us. But what about us? He says the two main commandments to love God with our everything. Is what you're doing, how you're living, a proof that you love God with your everything? Come on, there's 24 hours in your day, 24 hours. Ask yourself, how many of those hours do you spend knowing God, obeying God, seeking God, serving God, preaching the gospel of God? How many hours of those 24 do you spend actually living for God? Once you ask yourself, you will see whether or not you need to make a change. Come on, let's grow. So here's another quote that I like. It says, it is important that we not measure our spiritual health by the people around us who are pretty much like us. <laughs> and that's just sobering. You know, a lot of a lot of times, you know, we we try to judge whether or not we're following Jesus or really living for God or, you know, having holy conduct or not, um, according to the people around us. You know, well, you know, I don't cuss like him or you know, I don't cheat on my wife like him or, you know, I'm not, you know, living for money like him or, you know, we compare ourselves to people. But we got to ask ourselves, um, are we making Jesus and the life that Jesus not only lived, but taught and commanded? Are we making that standard what we're judging ourselves by? You know, when we examine ourselves, is it according to the word of God or just Hmm, I think I'm more holy than them. I think I'm more holy than them. It shouldn't be us comparing ourselves with other people because most people are not living for Christ. They're not walking in the spirit. They're walking in the flesh in disobedience. So that's very dangerous. I love that he mentioned that. It's so good. It's so good. Another, another uh, line here is it says, he knows that he's great and deserves to be the center of our lives. Jesus deserves to be the center of our lives. It says he commands everything from his followers. He commands everything from his followers. And I'm just, and I'm going to go ahead and just stop there with those quotes from this book. Okay. So I think, I think you've heard enough. I think, um, that every believer should read this book. It's a really good book. It's really, um, motiv motivating, challenging, convicting, um, and it quotes a whole lot of scripture and it puts scripture in such a good, healthy, sober, pure perspective without all the, you know, Christianese and churchy quotes and all the sugar coating um, that sermons and, 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 and preachers and YouTube videos and, and mega churches put on scripture. No, no, it's, it's, it's emphasizing what the text was attempting to emphasize to us what the letters the epistles the parables of jesus the teachings of jesus is is emphasizing what the teaching in that context was and not what we've made it out to be so many times in in the american uh church so i definitely recommend this book um man i'm i'm almost done with it i'm not all the way done with it i started reading it a few days ago i'm almost done with it it's, it's great. I already recommend it. I know it's good. You know, um, if you are somebody who needs to understand not just God's love, but God's character and what he expects of us once we believe in him and accept him and become his children, new creations. If you need to grow in that 
understanding and in that lifestyle get this book leave a comment on this video let me know uh, what you think of, of what i mentioned of the lines that i read the quotes from the book let me know if you have any questions um if, if you want to know where to get it i can put that link on there for you and uh i'll see you next time i do appreciate you guys liking the video helping me out by sharing the video to your social media and uh subscribing to the youtube channel if i've helped you grow in christ in some way i'll see you guys next time blessings let's grow